Aloha, top of the morning, friends and family. Uh, we are here at the NARBC Arlington, Texas Reptile Show, and I'm gonna give you some tips about how to have the most successful and enjoyable show possible. You just stick with me, guys. We're gonna do big things. First tip that I would say for the show is to manage your expectations. Depending on what size the show you go to is, is a good way to manage those expectations. If you're gonna have like 25 vendors, you could probably see the entire show. If you're going to a medium to large show like this one, then you might not see the entire show. If you go to a huge show like the Reptile Super Show in Los Angeles, you will definitely not see everything at the entire show. So just kind of manage those expectations and, and plan accordingly. You know, if you're talking to a vendor or two, you probably can if you're trying to talk to every vendor, it's just not gonna be possible for a large, even a medium to large show like this. So just understand what is potentially gonna happen for you at the show. Don't feel bummed if you don't get to see the entire show because you probably won't. Another thing to consider would be having a VIP pass, getting a VIP pass so you can get into the show on the day before it actually opens to the main public. You can talk to people like uh, Tom Harbin over here. He's got his back to us right now talking to somebody. But, but the idea is, you know, when the show starts, it gets really extra packed and you have a chance to have access to animals that people might buy the day before the official start of the show on the Friday. And so you get that VIP pass if you're looking for a certain animal that might be something that's gonna sell really fast. You have a much higher chance of getting it there. Vendors aren't super busy. You know, once they get a little set up, you know, be respectful of the time they're, they're taking to the set up, but there's a lot more time to talk to people because people aren't talking to a million people at once and it's just not as crowded. You know, you got a couple of people walking by every now and then, but for the most part, it's an open show. So a VIP pass is certainly something that I would consider. As you can see, if you didn't get the VIP pass to come early, you're gonna be fighting some crowds. If you're looking for a specific vendor, sometimes it could be hard to find them, but Morph Market has done something really cool. They actually have a little QR code that you can scan and uh, with that QR code, you can have a whole vendor list of who's gonna be at the show. And you can even do that online before you get to the show so you know which vendors are gonna be there. And then once you, once you get to the show, you can find out exactly where they are at the show and you don't have to waste time running around trying to figure out where they're at. You can have a map of the show and actually see exactly where those vendors are at and you can go find them right away. The next tip for having a successful reptile show is to go with friends. Bring a friend, even if they're not into reptiles. It's, it's just more fun to share the experience, especially with somebody who doesn't like reptiles, maybe turn them on to it. And uh, it's just a whole lot more fun. You don't want to be a loner standing alone by yourself somewhere just being like, do 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 And listen, if you don't have friends, that's fine too. The reptile show is one of the best places to come and make friends that are into reptiles like you are. I've made some of my best friends from my entire life here at reptile shows and uh, lifelong friends, people that I really care about. So even if you don't have a friend, come to the show, I guarantee you talk to a couple reptile enthusiasts, you'll have a friend by the end of the show. What's up, Patrick? What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Good, man, how it's you good doing? To see you, good to see you too, bro. Next tip to have a successful reptile show experience is to have a plan. And when I say have a plan, I mean have a plan as far as what animals you're gonna get. I do not recommend making an impulse buy at the show unless you already have enclosures set up at home. Like I do, about a third of my enclosures are empty, so if I did decide I wanted an animal, then I could get it and have something ready at home in my quarantine section, ready to go. But don't do impulse buys. Do not buy the animal first and then get an enclosure. It's just not fair to the animal. If you're gonna get an animal at the show, know what enclosure you're gonna have set up at home, have it set up at home, have it running, have the temps and everything, the humidity all set out so that when you get that animal home, it already has a nice spot to roll into. Uh, just getting animal on impulse at the show and then trying to figure out the caging later is just gonna be a nightmare and a disaster. So just have a plan as far as what animals you're gonna get at the show and definitely have your enclosures at home set up and ready to go for what, maybe extras. You know, have extra enclosures ready to go in case there's an animal that you just do want to impulse buy, at least you have the enclosure set up at home. I have that plan. My next recommendation, is to talk to vendors. It's fun to come to the show and check out the animals and you can walk around. You could literally spend an entire time walking around the show never talking to anybody. But the vendors at the shows have so much experience with the animals that you may love. Taking the time to talk and chat with a vendor, you'll gain more knowledge than you could imagine just by having that conversation. So I highly recommend finding the vendors that keep the animals that you're interested in and having a conversation, asking them questions. That's what they're here at the show for, is to talk to you and have those conversations and, and get you more knowledgeable with the animals that you love. Another pro tip for you if you're at the show and you're getting an animal, say you're flying to the show, believe it or not, you can't bring an animal on the plane, but very often there are companies like Redline Shipping that are at the shows ready to ship your animals back home for you. So if you're flying to the show and you need to get an animal home, uh, make sure you take a look at uh, Redline Shipping, get you guys' uh, animals home safely. This is the line for, uh, to check out Emily's Snake Discovery. 
Emily and Ed are amazing, fantastic people. And what they've done for the reptile hobby and, and bringing people's attention, bringing people to the shows is incredible. Look at how many people are in line to see them. And they're such awesome people too. Next pro tip for having a very successful reptile show experience is to stay hydrated and make sure you eat. It can be very exciting at the show and it sounds like a common, easy, common sense tip, but if you're not hydrated, you could end up passed out at the show. It happens. You don't want to be that person that is on their back having to be carried out of the show because you didn't stay hydrated and you didn't sustain yourself with the proper amount of calories. So make sure you do that. It is actually very important. What's up, bro? Let's go. How's it going, man? Good. Good to see you. You too. See, this is where that VIP pass might come in handy. It gets pretty packed around these shows, I'm just saying. <laughs> My final and possibly most important tip for having a good reptile show experience is to make sure you attend the US ARC auction at the show. The US ARC is responsible for defending our rights to even have these shows in the first place. If it wasn't for US ARC, reptile shows could be a thing of the past. So make sure you're supporting US ARC. And if you're at a show that doesn't have US ARC in attendance, maybe talk to that promoter and ask how they can have US ARC be a presence at their show. One last bonus tip. Now this is especially important if you're attending a show for multiple days in a row. You want to make sure that you get plenty of rest because you don't want to be running on fumes. Take it from somebody who's run on fumes at a show plenty of time. It's much better if you're rested up for each day of the show. So if you'd like to watch the whole journey of how we got to this show, watch this video right down here and uh, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the next video. Aloha. Can you give me a nice friendly smile and a wave? <laughs> no? Come on! How are you going to be inviting for the people? I'm saying, I'm saying you should go, come talk to Vanessa and Phil at the US Arc booth. Thanks. And make sure you talk to Vanessa or Phil while you're at the US Arc booth at the show. <laughs> the next... <laughs> I'm just multitasking back there. Ladies and gentlemen, just so you know, <laughs> Phil Goss is the man behind the camera. So if anything's wrong with this video, Phil Goss shot it. I'm working for free for Brian Cusco because he's the best. <laughs> he's also multitasking and working hard over there. So if he doesn't pay attention to what he's shooting, it's because he's busy fighting for our rights to even have these shows. This, you can zoom in or out if you want to. It's, I'll, I'll, I'll let you decide what you want to do. Hour. One hour of my crotch. Well, what, you're not going to come out here because we, we should go out and do it. Top of the morning, friends and family. We are here at the Arlington, Texas NARBC. Oh, yeah, I should start it over. No, 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 stop. No. Depending on what size of the show, goodness gracious. You're turning me into Dave Kaufman. Phil, you make these shows so much better for me, bro. <laughs>